think that we always talk about black males the positive um positive role models but black females need just as many positive role models as, as the males do man and i think we forget them a lot of the time when we discuss these positive um aspects i think that the road to positive females is is uh shorter and more successful than it is for males i don't feel i don't feel like black men um get into that positive role model position as readily as females do they got mr wolf nothing i do agree I mean, they, like I've said in the past, that they have, they continuously have got a lot of struggles. You know, there's there's no denying that. But if there's an employer and they see a black male and a black woman, and they can both do the same job, from what I've seen, they're going for the woman. Oh no! Oh, I wasn't. Whoa, whoa! whoa. Simple, simple, Stav- Stavros does not call sign. Well, Hala also doesn't call sign that. Simple Simon was not saying nothing like that. <laughs> What Simple Simon was saying was that I think women, black women in particular, are more on job. Hold on, is that is that Mr. Wolf over there? All, all by himself? Under the dog. <laughs> Under the dog. Under the dog. I, I can barely see him. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, rodents and other small insects. Welcome to Eloquently Saying Nothing, episode number 23. I am Stavros Bus. Let's see who else we have in the room. Big Wahala's back in the building, people. What's good? And this is Mr. Wolf in the house. Yes, yes. Simple Simon, they are. Club Tropicana drinks are free. Fun and sunshine, there's enough for everyone. Oh, let's switch in it to see. But don't worry, you can suntan. Scandal people, it's episode 23. She greets me on her knee. Hey! Yeah. Your boy Webs. I've hit you slakes. <laughs> I love that one there. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one, Web Slicker. We all doing well today? Hey, um. Well, how's doing all right, you know? Well, how's doing not bad? I'm, I'm glad to be back in the building. It's, it's strange when you're doing it remotely, man. I prefer to be in with all you guys, but I suppose last time I did that, it was, it was like six in the morning or something, so I was very tired. But yeah, it's good to be back. There's a whole load of misogynistic um, uh, intros that you're doing there, Webs. You know, talking about all this uh, of course. misogyny. Why not? Why is it misogyny? Because you greeted them on his knees. We're not the kings of misogyny, I are we not? I, I don't think there's anything misogynist about her greeting him in the knees. Mr. Wolf is good, man. Long day. What man would not like to be greeted by the women on their knees? Every man. Would not like to be greeted. Every man would like to be. Every man exactly. Like no, there's nothing misogynistic about it. I slightly feel like Mr. Wolf tried to cock block there. <laughs> what, I, I was looking at the day to see if, whether it's Tuesday or not. It's not quite, so I, I couldn't understand it. But you know, what can you do? Is it cock block Tuesday? Cock What's block that? Tuesday. Never that. Really? Never, never call sign cock blocking. Man. Have you ever cock blocked someone? It's, okay, that's, that's the first question. That has any man ever, by accident or on purpose, cock blocked the next man? Simple Simon, I exist. So you're just an ultimate cock block. <laughs> I exist. Well, you are a cock block in a way, though. I haven't done it on purpose, but I exist, isn't it? What can you do? Yeah, I, f- I think the definition of cock blocking is the intention to prevent somebody else from getting the woman. You know, and I'm, I've seen it happen. I've even got a friend that has done it before, on many occasions, and and he kind of laughs at it. But it's not, you know, it's not a good look, man. Have you ever done it yourself? Nah, I'm like, listen, it ain't no fun if the homies can't get none. Oh, my you know what I'm saying? So, God. so my thing is, is that listen, if you like that, go right ahead, bro. Plenty more fish in the sea, ain't no big thing. So, Webs, have you ever caught up with somebody before? Unintentionally. I have been a cock blocker, but I don't cock block intentionally. I don't need to. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. What do you mean unintentionally? So how did you unintentionally cock block somebody? Because I'd been at an event with a friend of mine. My friend was feeling his woman and the woman just bypassed him and came straight to me. But that's not cock blocking, I don't think. But what do you do? Okay, let, what, like, but he was trying to get with her and she wasn't really interested she was more interested in me and i wasn't even interested in that i was minding my own business yeah but cock blocking so he took it as a cock block 
I can't go nowhere with you because everybody's looking at you. I'm like, that's not my fault. But that's not I'm better looking than you. But what happens? What, I'm better looking than what you. What happens? You whore. What happens though in that situation though? Let's say that your your bedroom properly likes the girl, yeah, and the girl's not on it, but she likes you. Is it what? Which man is the, is it for the bedroom to just say, you know what? I tried to shoot my shot. I missed. You can probably slam dunk it. Go yes, ahead. Yes. Yes. Exactly that. So yeah, but that's exactly. your both interested in, in the in the said female, right? Well, who who's not interested the person that, that she likes no if, if both you and your brethren are interested in the said female no no not both of you you have no you you really don't care you're evil here or there yeah you don't really have a bother about it but he really 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 likes the girl so let's say Mr. Wolf really really likes this girl and you're here or there about it uh, but she doesn't really like Mr. Wolf she likes men with hair so <laughs> she says that she likes you as she likes you instead, Web Slinger, right? So, but you're not here or there about it. Should Mr. Wolf say, you know what? Go true, brother. Move with the force. Behave like a Sith Lord. Or does <laughs> he say, you know what? Brother, I really like her, man. I don't think it would make me feel good if I saw you with her. Don't go there. Yeah, I don't know. I'd might. Take a naked picture of her and send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that's wickedness. Yeah, man. But but if if that was me, then by all means, go ahead and slam dunk. You know what I mean? Like, pff, Mr. Wolf doesn't care, man. You know, there's plenty others in the sea, man. Plenty others in the sea. You know what? Um, simple Simon says something. He's, uh, he's not joking and joking at the same time because there's many times I went out with Simple and I was just overlooked because Simple was there. You know? Like yes. properly overlooked. A sweet boy. Like, yeah. like it was like a proper over. Like no woman would look at me. Not even the butter's friend was looking at me. A sweet boy. Yes. You see how you see how you see how Mr. Wolf comes here to um to besmirch my character by mm-hmm. by doing. That's sweet, what I did. Boy. I not used to call you that, bro. No, but you are the sweet boy. No, That's but I used to call you that back in the day. Yeah, bro. because you used to try to deflect. You to, nah, mate. You used to move like the sweet boy. But what's wrong with being a sweet boy? I don't. I, boy, I don't know. Why does every man want to run away from being the sweet? Because it takes it takes effort, and I'm not trying to. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't putting that effort in there. Do you get what I'm saying? And you that, say you don't come here now, and that makes you even more of a sweet. I don't boy, shave. Boy. I don't come. I don't do none of that stuff. Effortless. I think you know. sweet boy. Do you need to I, make? You need to put some effort into be a sweet boy. I think so, but um, I think that the way how Simple Simon was moving, you know, he could. It, it's almost as if he was moving on a hoverboard. You understand? Man's yeah. moving on a ho- on a hoverboard with his uh, locks just flowing behind him, and the women are just moist in the panty. Oh, wow. that's what used to happen. I, I was moving with Jesus at one point. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving with Jesus at one point, but there yeah. was one woman in Brazil that did call him Jesus. What the Santos? <laughs> <laughs> Boy. All right, what's this question you wanted to ask? Oh, yeah. So the question I had, I forgot what it was. I mean, you, you didn't even ask the question about cop blocking. I'm sure your blackface has clock blocked somebody before. No, you know, Just, but so, all right, similar to this thing about um, chatting women up on behalf of somebody else, women don't like it. So what you tend, because I can't chat up a woman for myself. I'm scared. But if somebody else says, I like that girl, can you talk to her? For some reason, all of a sudden, I could do it. And then when you go to the woman and you say such and such, uh, you know, my bedroom likes you. And they're like, no, well, your head now, isn't it? Don't worry about him over there. Your head now. And that's what tends to happen. Cold blood. Would, would you take the woman? Would you take her? <laughs> oh. Why not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cold, <laughs> cold because, now, because your brethren should give you the blessing to go ahead. I would give the blessing. That's what and I mean. um, it depends who it is and what kind of situation it is, whether I'd, I'd take that go ahead or not. You so know, the, some, the, something similar ha- ha- happened to me, actually. Um, years and years ago, in the... 80s. In the 80s. Mm, it was... I was interested in a female. I might have told the story, you know. I was interested in this female. She was so fine, boy. And um, uh, her friend liked me. So I said, listen, I'm not interested in your friend. I'm interested in you. And she says, listen, I can't do my friend like that. I said, listen, what can I do? I don't like your friend. I like you. And she said that she likes me as well. But because her friend liked me, that she weren't going to go to you. Solidarity. And you know what? That's the one, that's the one you should marry right there. I like that. That's what I'm saying. I like that. You should marry that woman. <laughs> well, she, you loyal. 
<laughs> I like that Because there's Bare girls that would just be like Yeah 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 Cool give me your number And they would tell the brethren Oh uh, some some long talk about how is this or how is that and then come to link you on the side mate she'll mm. be in Nando's with you eating a half chicken one time hold on is it wrong to take a woman to Nando's oh god we've had this discussion before what? have we what? yes you said I have this discussion with many people all the time about you and the Nando's thing you've had not me and Nando's what do I, what's me and Nando's got to do with anything we've had this discussion before the podcast trust me alright that's fine but uh, it's not, there's no me and Nando's there's you I can count on my hands the time I've been as a Nando's. first date I don't think so but hey I don't want to Okay. Anyways, um, so go on and say your question. I've I've given you my cock block story now. Okay, so I think the, me and me and um Steph was talking about how people is it how people perceive you? That was yeah. the question that we had. And I was I think that Stavros Stavros thinks that people perceive him in a way that is not actually true. I think when it comes to perception of how people perceive him, he is now become the Ian Bill of the podcast. Because he was telling me, oh, everybody hates me and oh, I'm not liked and all I this. No, I didn't put it like that. What so were you I saying? I don't like it. It's, it's so, because you know what? In life, there are storytellers. Yeah. <laughs> there are people that can tell good stories and there are people that are boring with their stories. Now, Stavros, as a host, I think I'm decent. But as a storyteller, I'm poor because I don't embellish. I don't, I don't flesh things out. Whereas Wahala is a wicked storyteller because you know what he takes? He takes the pea and turns it into a whole pod of, of peas because that's how his story is now. The man went from A to B, but not with Wahala's story. That man went there, he tripped a little bit, his shoelaces came undone, he saw some beauty. All of this is make, make-believe, by the way, but it makes the story so much better. It's not make-believe. Do you realise that he just told a good story then? Um, because yes. I, I, I was impersonating him. Oh, fair enough. So I'm, I'm just saying what it? I told him earlier on, just before we started recording, okay, go on. is that between the two of us, because we're similar age, we look alike. We're not similar age. You're older than me. Yeah, but respect that. Okay, you should respect it. <laughs> That's what you, you older beat. Now you but it's a really? similar age. We're not. It's not ten to twenty year difference no, of age, enough, is it? Fair enough, fair enough. Jesus. So we're similar age. Apparently, we look similar. You know, and we're brought up in the same house. We have certain traits that are similar. But I say that when we meet people together, they tend to like Wahala more than more so than me. So they'll go in and say, I like that Wahala. And maybe Stavros is, um, I don't know. I just don't think I get as much love from people we meet as him. But you said your exact words were... Um, they like you more than me. No, hold on. That, that's hold all on, it was, hold you on, know. Hold on. No, because we before that, you were talking about the fact that you said that you always at least leave that person with an impact. So it either they an dislike you yeah. or they like you. And you were saying that more people dislike you when they meet you than they like you. No, I was comparing myself. I did say that, but that would be it. I would say then I'll change it and just say I do leave an impression with a person. I'm not the type of person to meet you and you have no impression. You kind of make an, you form an opinion about me. You remember me. I remember that dude. And usually it's a positive or it's a negative. And yeah. So you think it's more negative or positive? N- Usually it's a positive or a negative. Sometimes you can meet somebody and they're so like bland, beige or grey that you don't you don't really form too much of an opinion. It's like oh we met two weeks ago. Like did we really? I don't. Sorry, I don't remember meeting you. Yeah, we, you know we we spoke, but because they didn't leave any impression on you. That's ultimately really, that's negative, then isn't it? I would no, say that's also negative. I don't think that's negative. It's just you, you just you if know, you spoke just, to somebody for a, a period of, a good period of time and they left no impression, like they don't even remember that you mean you have even spoken. That's n- negative, man. No, neutral is neutral. That is what it is. It's neutral. You left no impression on me. You, I didn't leave thinking you were positive. I didn't leave thinking you were negative. I think a neutral impression can come from like maybe hi, how you doing? You're right. Yeah, that's fine done you've met that person but you haven't really I don't done mean anything. the longest conversation in the world but you, you spoke for a couple of minutes somewhere and then they just don't remember whereas the person remembered you so like, yeah you were the really funny one like I know people in life when I meet them because I've got bad memory but there's people I meet and it's like, I don't forget that person because they were so bubbly or so fun or so something or they were so mean so rude it's like I can't forget that rude person so Wait, Wait, so are you doing workout huh were you doing a workout or something no, why? Because <laughs> it sounds like, sound like you're doing something in the background. It sounds sound like so you're doing something you should be doing on the microphone. Bro. <laughs> and then you got caught. <laughs> doing a I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to listen to you guys. Oh, uh, cool. All I can hear is... <laughs> Just, well, just remember there's well, a mute button there. Just remember there's a mute button there. That's all I'm saying. See, you said it. Uh, oh, you're oh, dirty, oh, bastard. Oh. Yeah, bastard. <laughs> And anyway, continue while I continue. All right. So anyway, so I was saying that, you know, I think that people have this obviously preconceived uh, notion about how people perceive them. So I was wanted to ask you guys, how do you think 
you are perceived by people outside. Like, how do you think that people first perceive impressions? You? Yeah, not first impression, just in general. How do you think people perceive you? Because obviously, Stav is not liked. That's what he believes. Or not, not so that he's not liked, but he's he, he leaves a impression, and, and I think he. I, I, are we saying that you think you leave more of a negative pos- uh, impression with people than the positive one, or are you saying you leave a positive one? Well, according to you, Wahala, they are. I keep insulting everybody, and they <laughs> they they think I'm an insulting person. So, I, like I said, I don't think I am. But you keep telling me over and over again, you don't know how rude you come across. It's true. So um, I call sign. Your brother. Okay, well then, if, so if and I, and I've actually spoke to uh, people that has met you for the first time. Said the same thing, and I've said to them, "Don't worry, you will eventually like him." Haven't I said that? So then, are you, we just co-signing the fact that people do take me and they don't like me in the beginning? I would say but that's what instead of you taking the thing which is that you're rude, you're taking that people don't like you. But uh, even if I am rude, let's say for instance I'm rude. Let's just use that as a foundation. I don't. I don't think it's rude. I, 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 I think it's very blunt and for an acquired taste. I think yeah. he's rude. No, no. Stavros is an acquired taste. He mm. can, and in that acquiring of taste, you. If you, I would say, if you met Stavros once and never met him again, there's a there's a high probability that you won't like him. It's only when you meet him the second, the third, the fourth time and you realise that is just how he is and he doesn't mean anything by it, that's when the tables will turn. But before that time, you're, you're likely I to... I think, yeah. I think it all depends on what topic is being brought up, what he's discussing and whether or not he agrees with you or disagrees with you on said topic. But I, I, Do you know what? I, I don't even think it's that. I just think if you're going to have a conversation with uh, Stavros for maybe two minutes, you know, and he just says bang, 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 and he just says a, f- a few things, then maybe perhaps they'll leave and thinking that this guy's an arsehole. But it, I don't know. If if, if, if if you're engaging in a conversation that lasts maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, then the initial 2, 3, 4 minutes, or even up to 5, they'll think, fucking hell, man, this guy's an arsehole. But then as you go deeper into the conversation, I think they'll find, okay, this guy is actually the truth. So, like I said, if people, if we're all agreeing, or you, you guys are all saying, Webs, are, are you the same? Do you think the same thing? I think Stavros is Marmite. You either like him or you don't. He's super malt. <laughs> He's super malt. We don't call Marmite air. We call it super malt. You know what's so funny? Um, somebody, a couple of people who I know have met Webs and they've gone to me. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Webs is another one. Webs is, Webs is. But Webs is, Webs is another one. But the thing with Webs is that most people like him at the beginning and then it's when they annoy him that Webs will switch on them and then they don't like him. But most people like Webs from the beginning. That's mm. my personal take on Webs. But with Stav, I think sometimes with Stav, because he's the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth so much, I think sometimes he, he forgets that he doesn't have to be so... Uh, see, but this is the thing because People talk, you all, like, all tell me that I'm very rude. I'm rude, I'm this, I'm blah, 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 I'm abrasive or whatever. But I think that if I le- speak to somebody, less people call me rude than Steph because of the way that he will talk to somebody is very different than the way that I would. Whereas, uh, how can I put, the thing with Steph, he's very dismissive. If you don't agree with what you're saying, he will just dismiss you, like you're chatting rubbish. You're, you're well, is more brash than rude. Steph is just rude. Yeah, I don't feel about Halle's rude. I just think that he's cheeky. I, I just think that you come across like the Hulk. <laughs> You're a joker. <laughs> I think Wahala's got um, more. He, he's more bubbly with it. Birdie, than me. Birdie. So I, I, I hear the dismissive thing that I can be very dismissive, but I think as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing it for your benefit. Why would I? Let you, if and, I if I like you, why would I let you and carry the, on chatting rubbish? And the, I need to stop you, innit? We can't ever leave out the fact that there is a certain level of arrogance that comes with this man as well. Mm, the arrogance. Which one? You. Arrogance. Stavrons. Stav Ricky is arrogance. But anyway, this is how this is. We're, we're telling him how we think about what he said. But Which you, I think is good, actually. Yes. Oh, so you think we should do this? We should do it this way. No, we can do it both ways. What what I feel, and then you tell me. Well, so I've already said what I think, and you guys have already told me. So I think we should we can move on to somebody else. I'm not I'm not so arrogant just to keep the whole thing on myself. I think you're the one that needs the most help. Though. Damn. <laughs> is this an intervention? I thought that was like, Webs. But that needs the most help. Well, that's how the uh, general consensus is on this thing. <laughs> not from me, though, Webs. Are you talking about mental help? 
Or are you talking about just normal help to how to communicate with others? Everything. <laughs> I don't know. I think Webs is a good communicator, better than most, to be honest. Webs, how do you think you're perceived when people meet you? Personally, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> most people like to be liked. I don't care whether you like me or not. Liar. Um, you're you're so an yeah. actor. How can you not care if people like you or not? I don't give a fuck. If you like me, you like me. If you don't like me, you don't like me. It's not really going to make a difference to my life. I will still breathe and carry on doing what I'm doing. But how do you think you're perceived? Whether you, if you like don't it pay or not, me, it's, a different, it's a different story. Um, how do I think I'm perceived? I think people generally like me. I do carry a screw face until you talk to me and get to know me. Then the screw face lifts, and I'm smiley and laughy and jokey. Okay. And how do we think that uh, webs is? <laughs> I think it's, the situation is in because he's an arty, arty type person when he's around other arty type people he feels more at home and he's much more um, what's the word just um, free no he, he's much more easy going yeah it's, I mean okay he makes everybody else much more comfortable when he's in a place where because I think arty people are a bit more um, he's more in tune with them so when he's around his acting friends or because I've been to acting class with him Everyone likes him there. I'm, you know, I've seen him do DJ and things and whatnot. Everyone likes him there. When he's around people that are bubbly and young and whatnot, it's cool. And then also when he's around very old people and then he switches on the respect level, he's like, this is an elder, so I have to be respectful. And he, and he switches it up. But if he's around peers that, that usually people that are maybe posers or they kind of like they want you to treat them a certain way even though they haven't earned it. You know, does that make any sense? Mm. I hear what you're saying. I hear you. Then it, because he doesn't give he doesn't give that to you straight off. It doesn't work, and then all of a sudden, so they might not like him. But the thing he said about the screw face in the beginning and then easing up that is also true. I don't know if it's on a day basis. You might have to meet about five times before all of a sudden the thing eases up. But it, it does happen. Mm. Fair enough. I don't know, man. I think Webs. <laughs> no, I think Webs is like my most man. I always say that Webs is the one that everybody likes the most until you, you mess with him and then he he does something. Or he, you do something to him that he feels is inappropriate, and then he just is the opposite. Like well, you just horrible. Well, that's standard because we know that if you cross webs, then you're caught in the web, and you'll you'll eat your head. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's webs, yeah. So anyone you, you can't cross webs, and then think it's all it's all gravy. You're dead to me. You're dead to me. Yeah. But sometimes they don't even know they've done anything. That's the problem. Oh, that's that's the be- that's a major problem. Boy. <laughs> There's times that people where Webs got a pop with somebody. You ask them, oh, where's Webs? They'll be like, well, where's Webs? I haven't seen him for a while. Webs is like, kill him, kill him, kill him. I want him dead. And they're like, they don't, know, <laughs> they don't know what they've done. <laughs> Not tomorrow. And then we ask Webs, we ask Webs, what did they do? Well, what did they do, Webs? Well, yesterday, when I went to go and get KFC, they took the last wind chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> something, something like that. No one knows what he, he did. He just decided one day that this person is somebody he doesn't like or they've done something that... He, I think at times he could be unnecessarily uh, dis- uh, cold to people for something that I'll look at you like, bro, it's not that bad. But for you, that's is that bad? For me, you take the last chicken wing, that's a blast for me. Yeah, but they didn't know you was going to purchase... They weren't, you weren't even the shop when they went. You just heard that they were there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They just phoned you and said, I was in KFC t- like 20 minutes ago and you went in there now. And you, that's, that's your problem. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I, th- I think you're, um, I think that you perceive, perception wise, I think a lot of people like Webs. I think at times he can, um, it depends on, as I said, like what, I'm um, sorry, what Stav was saying, it depends on the situation and where he is. And yeah, if he feels that you're a poser or you feel like you're supposed to be liked, then Webs automatically won't like you and will behave as such just to piss you off. Mm. Mm. Interesting. All right. I don't, Simple. I, I don't think everybody has to go around to view everybody. I think the people that jump in straight away early is happy to, to give their opinion. Good so, Mr. That. Wolf, how do you think people think about you? Um, over the years, I'd That's say that cool. some people perceive me as not being approachable. And uh, Stush, I've heard a number of times, he thinks he's too nice. You do have a Stush stance to you. Sweet boy, I've got a confidence stance. I don't know if it's confidence. Oh, yeah. Very confident, Ex- but and I, I think that I don't know if the stance is confident. Though I wouldn't call it confidence. I I, I don't walk I'll around. Call it metrosexual with my um, <laughs> tail in between my legs. I'm I'm kind of bold and got my chest up and walking straight. I'm a confident person. I think that some people have looked at me and thought, you know what? Forget that guy, man. He thinks he's too nice. 
That's what I've got over the years, a lot of the time. Seriously? Until they come over and have a conversation or they ask somebody about this guy and they say, no, 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 that guy's cool, man. You're talking men or women? Both. Would Mostly men, women. The men say that next man is, thinks he's too nice. Is that no. something that man will say? Unapproachable, guys. Uh, women, stush, unapproachable. So what do you think people feel about Mr. Wolf, the problem solver, the under the dog? Mm. You know what? I actually don't know. Uh, neither do I. You know, I was th- I'm sitting there. I'm the one that's known you the longest. Ah, and actually, that's one of the things that they say, is that I'm very, very hard to read. Very hard to read. No, I, no. You know what? Stavros has got an opinion. People immediately like Mr. Wolf, and then they go on to like him. This is why you know so many people. This is why your phone book is is, is rammed full of full of. Full I of do know friends. a lot of people. Yeah, I so I don't get the impression that people think you're stush. I don't get the imp- impression people think that you're stuck up. I from my experience That's when people from my experience when people first meet you. They immediately take a liking to you. It's like you're the small little puppy in it. Like, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. He looks yeah. like, you know them small dogs that have no hair. Egg, the boy. ones that have no hair. He looks like you know he's got no he's, he's got no bite. No, no bark not, in it. Not even a flipping yeah. lion and a, or a tiger. You know, no, you're the cute. Stroke. You're the you're them ones that the girls Fifi put in the dogs. dogs. Yeah, they, 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 they put dog. in their handbags. That's just horrible. <laughs> yeah, the ones that run around That's trying to make noise, but nobody's listening to them. That's horrible. <laughs> it don't matter you can put flat pack, flat pack furniture together so it's alright you can de- do DIY yeah, and that's so it's cool horrible. if you couldn't do DIY I would be sorry for you well, but if you did DIY he'll pose in the mirror while he's doing it <laughs> he'll take a picture <laughs> selfie of himself with the, with, the, with the drill this is me with the scroll drill well, this is me with the drill I'm gonna Mr. drill Mr. Wolf later. is very I'm a confident person and the perception is is that I I don't know like looking at myself and that I overgrew myself and things like that but I don't do that bruv okay. I wake up and within 25 minutes I'm out of the house mate and I'm and in the car looking in the mirror you know how many times I've left the house and I've got a patch of flipping soap on the top of my I'll, head I'll be because <laughs> I haven't <laughs> looked Mr. in the Wolf, mirror Mr Wolf I'll be honest with you I, I did one time see you comb your bald head I saw him brush his bald head maybe, one time. maybe that was a, just jokes Oh, okay. I, I can't call my board here. No, there was yeah, a time you that brushed you, it. There was a time that you got out of the car. I'm never gonna forget this because it was. I've said it on the podcast before. You got out of the car. You took off your hat. There was no hair there. You took out a brush and you brushed it. And I was like, oh, I have to ask you, what are you brushing? <laughs> are you sure, bro? I'm very sure. No, I do not. I it did was not the, do it that. Was in, what did he say? It was in I'm, the city. I'm brushing now. Where did it hit us? It was in the city. I kind of remember. It might have been flaky. I can't, remember, my head, the, I can't remember the road. Head top might have been flaky. I know. I don't know. But you, you, you brushed it in the mirror, and I said, "You ain't got no hair, bro." But you brushed it anyway. I think you're just used to brushing. Yeah, and then it all happened. <laughs> Suddenly. All right, Wahala. What do you think people think about you? Uh, I don't know. I think most people just. It depends on what type of person you are. So I think most people find me okay. So I get a more of a positive um, result, I reckon, than negative. But if you are the type of person that thinks that some people that like, don't like people that may be seen as over the top, then you may have a dislike for me. Does that make sense? Because I can be seen as loud and brash and abrasive. And sometimes my jokes could be, as um, Simple said earlier, quite cheeky. Mm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I just I think that you, the way that you look, period, you're a big black man, innit? And, oh. and, 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 and some people may look at you and think, oh my God. Yes, I'm unapproachable. Forgot about that. Yes, yeah, a lot of people yeah. talk about unapproachable. In fact, a lot of people say that I Be- believe you to be unapproachable. Because you've got this no-nonsense look about yourself when you're just going about your business even when you're looking at meat it's a no nonsense approach to the meat and it's a <laughs> screw face and we've seen that face many a time <laughs> in my job I, I am a, I'm a manager in the way I work so I have to at times do an interview and I've been I've just started the job not long ago about four four months ago or something so they hadn't really seen me interview anyone before so I did an interview a couple of weeks ago and then the man goes to me when the interview is finished the other guy that did the interview goes to me but why do you look at that man so seriously? Like, if I was the person, I'd be so intimidated by you. And all I was doing was just paying attention. <laughs> I was actually really just, screw face. I was like, I was just paying attention to the man. He goes, Nah, you look like you wanted to like you was proper psyching him out. I was like, Nah, I was just paying attention. And by rights, I was just trying not to fall asleep in the interview. 
<laughs> because you know when, sometimes when I, when I sit down for a long period of time I'll just feel, if I haven't if especially if I'm tired I'll just feel to fall asleep yeah. so I was trying my best not to fall asleep and to pay attention to the band but the other guy took it like I was trying to sack out the dude and I was trying to you know make him feel intimidated and the guy wasn't looking in my face which annoys me as well I don't know why you can't say anything why are you not looking in the person's face when you're talking to them because he was scared but why would he be scared he was as big as me he was still scared. double my size but um yeah I just so yeah I do get unapproachable quite a lot so if if you're right in probably saying that simple what yeah what well, I think about him mm. um yeah I think you know him quite well probably yeah actually I do um yeah so I've known I've known him for a while and um I would say he's quite personable and people actually are quite reactive to him like I've noticed I've seen he's met somebody for the first time and within within five minutes the other person's guards down because obviously they get that initial thing they see him and they're like mm, like this guy looks a bit angry or whatever and then within five minutes their guards down their jokes or whatever and they they actually say it as well oh he gives me jokes man he gives me jokes this guy's funny and then that's kind of like a lasting impression I've had people that have met him once or twice and they're like my friends from way back and they're like oh yeah how's your friend I'm like who, who are you talking about and they're like yeah the guy what's his name I'm like ah oh, yeah 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 he's cool so from that point of view, I would say he's quite personable and, I, and people receive him in that fashion. He's got a screwy face now. He, he's always got a screwy face. <laughs> <laughs> I looked around at him. He was looking like, what are you talking about, Negro? Yeah, it's like, if, I don't, if I don't smile, that's how my face looks. <laughs> what are you talking about? Is it, the only time you see him not looking like he's got a screwy face is when the meat just finished. I always look like somebody dropped the plantain in the house. I always, that's what I always look like. I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how else to look. Like, how do you make your face, your face look like like nice all the time? What no, the don't worry, man. Uh, you're not alone, boy. It's, not a, alone. it's a natural yeah. way that your face is. It ain't none. All right. Simple. For me, guarded. You peop- you think people see you as guarded? Mm. I ain't disagreeing there. I think people see him as a drug dealer. <laughs> why, why would you go there? And a, and a weed smoker. Why would you go there? You got red eyes and dreadlocks. <laughs> That stereotype <laughs> lives through you, boy. And a thief. Yeah, exactly. And a thief. <laughs> Why would it be a thief? Because <laughs> dreadlocks and, and, and weed smokers are also affiliation with, with um, thieving. Really? And you drive yes. a drug dealer's car. And you drive a BMW. I don't drive a BMW. With a, with a, a tissue mes- box at the back. And Mercedes. <laughs> and a fist. <laughs> and a fist at the front. He drives a Mercedes. Nah. Oh, I don't know. I think simple. I, I don't know if people, I would say people, I think he's guarded, you know. I don't, I don't know. know. Is that it though? Guarded? No, that, bro, that's it. Guarded. Right. Even that answer is telling you what, is telling you I think it depends on where they see him if he's going to do on a social media like there's a different way of seeing people they see you on social media when people think you're some form of genius on social media but when they see you in real life I think you God come, you come down the door <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounded like I was thinking hold, hold on now be careful what you say hold on now do you know what I think people think about you sometimes I think people think you're suspicious and you've got an agenda at times Agenda? Interesting. Yes. Why is that? Because the way that you ask questions is like you're interrogating the people that you're talking to at times. Ah, yeah, I can understand that. And the way that you actually ask the questions is not just the, the questions that you ask, it's actually the way you ask them where you look to the sky, you squint a bit, do like a Columbo and then ask them the question and it looks like you actually are trying to find out the, the, the interrogation truth about what they're saying and whether or not you're lying to you. Like it almost assumes that Almost like you're assuming they're lying before they've even opened their mouth at times. You know what? You know what that is. It's not an assumption of lies. I um. Sometimes the answer is not that important. So sometimes you see me formulating a question. It's, it's so that the question I'm asking, um, I'm not interested necessarily in the answer. I'm interested in the path to the answer. So the way the person thinks, as opposed to what they think. If that makes any sense. So uh, I'm trying to learn about that person on a deeper level more than anything how about learn about that person on a long thing you no. just ask a question no 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 if I'm you, you notice if I'm not interested in somebody the questions I ask them are very like arbitrary like off the top questions but yeah but there's never a time I see that you're not interested in somebody like it? there's never times when I see that you are not really interested in that person it's true I don't talk to the people I'm not interested in. yeah maybe <laughs> I think most times you'd ask you, you'd seem to find something something of interest even if it's the way that they behave will be of interest to you and that will then drum up some form of questioning that you will ask them if you're having a conversation with them and I think at times people can then leave 
wondering whether or not you were asking them questions for a reason rather than just asking them questions for conversation. And sometimes I ask random questions. As Very well. true. I throw that stuff in there. Why not? Webs, mm-hmm. uh, what do you think? Of simple? Yes. I don't particularly like him. I've never liked you either. <laughs> How do you think other people see him? Um, I've heard people, well, we know a certain person that refers to him as pretty cuzzy. Um, people look at simple you refers to him as what sorry refer to you as pretty cuzzy does, does that pretty go back cuzzy. to the sweet boy thing oh, well. sweet boy thing yeah standardly mm, you know adds a little weight to it uh, I've noticed people will come back to me and say is that your cousin I was, no he's not my cousin he's just somebody that tries to look like me you it's cock blocking to- bruv you cock blocking though <laughs> but he's generally re- he's generally revered as a a cool, laid back, um, a very um, I don't know what the right word, but he's like a he's like an animal that's ready to pounce. He he watches before he does or says anything. He's very he's an observer. He observes before he he makes uh, a decision. that. Cold sign that. Yeah, yeah that, and that. a lot of people have said that to me about him because he's very observant. He just looks and assesses before he jumps in or says anything. Which is a very cool trait to have. So yeah, you're you're a cool brother, but don't let go of your head. But mm. on a scale of one to don't like you, yeah. Oh, I'm on the I'm on the don't like you scale. I never had. All right. Um, this week my wife, who's Ghanaian, got sent a message from her aunt in Ghana about some dude that got um. He's, a, he's an army person he had decided to take a morning run and had his side piece on him for whatever reason I'm not sure this is in Ghana now a woman saw him and thought that he was maybe running away from some sort of crime because she caught a glimpse of the gun so she accused him of being a thief now in certain countries in Africa there's such a thing as street justice and basically she called him a, she's shouting out thief 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 they caught this guy beat him on the road so this is just random people on the street now so once you once it's 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 known that somebody's a thief especially if you're in a market or something like that and you steal from one person in the market and then the rest of the market gets involved or whatever they caught him beat him stoned him and then burnt him this is in the middle of the street and it was recorded now my missus for some strange reason wanted to watch this video and she said i couldn't finish watching the video you know i can usually watch this kind of stuff which made me side eye her anyways because i don't know why anyone watches this stuff but there's two questions that come up here. One is, are we happier watching violence on social media as opposed to uh, acts or displays of love and passion? Because another picture, a video was sent around of a woman naked and she was talking like she was having a, a very simple conversation about just whatever. But it's like, I can't, I'm deleted of um, Facebook and Twitter and all this, all these social medias because I'm naked, but they allow you to watch people getting beat up and, and you know, shooting, police shootings. That's all right to show on social media. But me standing here naked talking to you is wrong. So I'll be more comfortable now watching violence than the naked bodies. Or, or do we just want to talk about the, the violence part? Um, I think it's uh, <clears throat> sensationalism to some degree. Once upon a time, sex was the sensationalism like you see somebody naked you're automatically got your attention but I feel like the way society is now and the way we interact with each other now like nakedness sexual orientation sex uh, sexual imagery sexual behaviour is so commonplace now that seeing a woman standing on camera talking naked isn't even like considered a big thing whereas the violence the violence you see in some of these videos is what you've heard for years and years and years in hip-hop songs and never really seen in real life kind of thing. Or you've seen it in movies and thought, okay, that's a movie. Now you're starting to see this stuff in real life. So there's a certain level of sensation um, and stimulus associated with it. And also we like to push boundaries. That's all we like to do. We like to just push our own boundaries to see... I don't know why we do it, to be honest with you. You people are sick that send these videos around. And I'm looking at people around this table as well. <laughs> For me, I, I, the thing about with this whole situation with the Ghana man, right? For one, I, I heard this numerous stories about what actually happened. So your story is one. I'm hearing all these different stories. I heard that people knew who he was and they still killed him and all of this stuff. But the thing for me that is 
a big issue is you're talking about social media. I'm thinking about how people are so ready to just kill somebody on the road. Like, all of those people are murderers. All right, let's talk like, about it. All about of them that. are murderers. How many people in the street that was doing their normal day-to-day job, whatever, <clears throat> selling collar nuts, whatever they were doing there, suddenly it's just a murder yeah, straight away. Apparently, you know, like massive slabs of stone. It happens quite often, though. Yeah, street in, justice is not uncommon. In Africa and yeah, South it, America. And yeah, but you're just murderers. No, but it's... How, 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 how okay are you to be a murderer? Yeah, but the thing is, with with that, I understand what you're saying, but in a funny kind of way, the street justice thing works the same way um, the execution um, block works, yeah? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know if you know about it, but like lethal injection, for example, there's free injections that are pumped in on purpose. Um, and only one of them has the lethal dose, as far as I remember, yeah? And... Um, they used to make it be that more than one person pushed the button to make the injection go in, but nobody knows who's got the, the fatal dose. So that although they've killed the person, you can't point at any one of those people and say, that's the murderer. You know it's one of those three people, but they don't know who they are, which one of them it is, and you don't know which one it is because they've pressed the button and it's killed them. The same thing happens with the street justice. They're all beating him, but who actually gave the blow that ended the person. You well, don't know. If the man's alive when you put a tire around his neck and burn him, then the person that put the tire around his neck and put the set out of flame is the person that killed him, you know? Well, but that's what I'm saying. This isn't done like that. But it was. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, when I say it's not done like that, I mean, it's there's more than one people. Yeah, there's one, one, one person beating the person, but there's usually one person that sets the person alight. Mm, I don't know. They're not all coming with lighters, are they? That's, I've seen, I've from what I've seen, more than one person throws a box of matches in. Okay. Well, uh, for me, it's just the ready and able to just murder somebody on the street. Yeah, but that cult- it's crazy. Cult- it- that means culturally stealing is like the lowest thing that you can possibly this, do. This is my biggest problem with this situation because to be honest... I should do that with the pedophile. If, if jungle justice or whatever they call it, yeah, or street justice, in certain capacities, I'm not even that, that thing about it. I think it's terrible, but it depends on what the act is. My f- issue with jungle justice and street justice is it's poor people against poor people. That like, is a one like a, a somebody like a little boy could go and steal an orange, and because you've got five oranges and he's got none, you've only got five still, so you're still poor. You probably even understand why this one this boy wants this one orange because he can't eat, but they'll still kill him. Do you understand what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. You're in the same predicament. It's not rich people killing the poor people in this in this mm, instance. Mm. It's poor people killing poor people. It's just mad. I just think to myself, in that situation, you should be able to, you know, at least sympathise. You haven't got nothing to eat. I've probably seen you walk in the street every day, no clothes on, no shoes, no nothing, and you're just trying to get like a loaf of bread or a or a. Yeah. Or a, or a that's not necessarily the case. You have people that maybe they're, they're robbers and they're just robbers. Maybe, yeah, there's robbers. Maybe, maybe they're, they're drug addicts and they just want to rob people to get drugs. Yeah, the robbers, I can understand, but it's not just robbers that they do this with. It's anybody that they see as a thief. Do I remember the video that went around not long ago about the little boy that, he was a little boy, he was at least 12, 13. And they, apparently he was, with, he was with a group of people that were stealing phones, but he was still 12 or 13. And they, they stoned him to death and burnt him alive on the street. And there's uh, the thing that happened, I think last year sometime with the, uh, in the, I think it was in a university in Nigeria, where they thought these boys were gay or something. And then the same thing happened to them. They said that, I was just reading to what, today when the same thing that you're talking about with the Ghanaian post, I met with a guy, another person was talking about in Ghana, they said that one woman was a witch, so they burnt her. Can't, they can't really uh, clarify that she's a witch or not. Somebody's just accused the person of being a witch. They will decide, you know what, a bit of witchcraft there. Better. So okay, just as happy as certain people are, are to, you know, do the act, we are still sharing these kind of things as well. Whether because in, in our WhatsApp group, I've seen um, stories. I've seen well, I haven't because I don't watch these videos. Stavros can't watch these things. Yeah, but I don't think I wasn't built for it. Anyways, blatantly call me soft or whatever you want. I don't care. But I've heard wow, the knife just went right through his chest. Yeah, stabbings. stuff like that. Yeah, this is what I'm I'm reading as as people are watching this thing. Wow, bashings we've seen stabbings, bashings on the head, stuff like mm. beheadings. All of these things are flying around in my yeah. phone, and I'm like, what is? And I don't understand. Before this stuff used to be illegal to be, even be on there, your phone. There was a there was a program on Channel Four. Remember that that did all this. Remember? Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Because that because I think that's when I realized I can't watch it because they they did the program on Channel Four, and then it's the first time I saw a beheading. And it was in Saudi Arabia or something, and you saw the man, 
but he was he had a, a long sword, but he was chopping it. It didn't happen once. He chopped it, and I said, I switched it off, and that was it. That was, was it actually shown, or was it blurred out? They were showing it. Oh wow! Oh, um, but the video was from far. It was like it was like it was almost like a camera phone. This is a few years ago now. It's quite quite a few years ago now. It was when it was free GGP or whatever it is. Um, so it, it, so it was poor quality, and it seemed like it was from far away, but it was visible enough. And I was like, nah, this is not for me. And since then, this is maybe. I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago. I ain't never, never watched those things again. I just don't understand that. When something like that is going down, the first instinct for people is to take out their phones. Okay, we was just sitting here and I was on Facebook and I was just watching a video of some, some girl, there was filming some girl potentially going to get raped. And I'm like, what is, the pers- what is possessing people to film all of this stuff? I just think that it's the... Um, age that we live in now you know there's there's a social media thing and that's what people do they want to capture the moment when something happens it's almost as if um, everybody is a news reporter there's this new thing on Sky News now where if you well it's not that new but if you see anything capture it on your phone and send it in you know so people have got smartphones everybody's got one even children have them and anything that is an event um, they get it on their phone and they throw it on social media, and I'm, I have to say that um, it's Mr. Wolf. I do watch those things. I wouldn't say that I go searching for these videos, but if the videos uh, do pass by my phone, I will have a look, and then that's it. But I sent it does something. It. You will forward it out. Yeah, I'll forward it on. But I also sent a video into our WhatsApp group not too long ago, and uh, and Stavros kind of dismissed it, and and it was me doing the black male empowerment thing there was a video people may have seen it, it was you missed off, it while you're kidding because is off. this when you didn't have your phone maybe? i saw it this is something about the boys that got a degree it's, yeah it's for yeah. for no, they didn't get they didn't even get the degree yet they're in university yeah they, they, yeah i did they, i did not understand what the big deal was no yeah. they were doing masters in astrophysics okay yeah there yeah. are um how is the number of astrophysicists now there's only six Six hundred, is it six hundred thousand or something like that? And your point. So yeah, but this is it's the like thing. they're one in a million. Yeah, but if they, did they no. go out their way? Did that what they wanted to do? No, 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 no. What no. do you mean? Did they want to be astrophysicists? You're missing the point. Yeah. Well, well then I don't understand the big deal. I don't see the difference between somebody being an astrophysicist. One in a million. Oh, no, let me finish talking. I don't understand the difference between somebody being an astrophysicist or going to university to do that, to somebody going to the university to go and do business, to somebody going to university to go and do language, for somebody going to university because if that's what you want to do. Then that's what you want to do. I don't. I don't have this elite thing where this one is better than that one. I'm not saying it's better, but I'm saying, bro, like the ratio is one in a million astrophysicists as it is now. One in a million, bro. That is your like, point. That's very rare. That's and extremely rare. So you've got five black men that are all going to enter into that academy. That's good for them. Yeah, but, but I don't. I don't. I don't see it as some form of. For me, if there was, if there were like twelve, <laughs> then I'll say yes. Boom. You're you're going to some next level because you're a young person that shouldn't be in university in the first place. But at the age of going to university, they've been studying for this subject all their life. They're doing the subject they wanted to do. I don't get the 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 big thing. I I get the pride that's from as I say to say yes, you're doing a good job. But it's not something for me that makes me feel like any better than if somebody else was in university doing another university thing. Just to uh, flesh out what the video is, uh, hopefully we can post it on the social media after this episode comes up is a, a woman, I think some people have come into her store, it seems like one of these um, black black stores, and she said, listen, I don't normally do this kind of thing, but I've had these four boys, and I just think we need to congratulate the boys in our society, basically saying the same thing as we said, you know, certain videos get sent around, there's so much negativity, I want people to see the positive. So, tell me, tell me, tell me about yourself, boys, and they say, I'm such and such, I'm 23, I'm from here, and I'm studying to be an astrophysicist, and then she goes along the list, and they're all in that kind of field. And then she's like, this is great, fantastic. I'm so, and I think the thing that bothered me is she said, I'm, I'm honored to, to be around you. And this, is a, this was a, an elder woman to, obviously talking to very young men that are just at uni. And I'm thinking, it's similar to, to what Wahala is saying basically, that this is, um, it's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not a good thing to go to university to, to, to persevere and to, to try to um, better yourself and to educate yourself. I'm very, I would be very proud of those people doing it if I knew them personally. But I don't think that um, it's something... I, what I said, this is what I, I told Mr. Wolf because he sent it to the group. I said, the minute that we have to send videos out 
of people going to university and use that as a, as a status of look at something to be proud of, then I think we're losing. And we are losing. So, and, and that is the point, bruv. Like, because you're going to university, I have to sit here no, and, no, no. and and, and, and wait, applaud you. Wait, like, we're losing, man. Wait, wait, two things, two things. Go on, sir. I'm confused because I don't know if it was last episode or the one before, Wahala was saying that he doesn't like the fact that there aren't any movies or stories about the normal guy. Yeah. The, the guy that didn't go to prison, the guy that didn't do the whatever, what have you. So this is now basically a story about... It's not a movie, bro. Normal guys. Well, the, you just said they're one in a million. So they're wait, wait. Wrong. Normal guys that are doing something that is actually quite special. Because, like I said, the ratio is like... Put it this way. It's one in a million as a ratio and they're all black as well. So black physicists, the only one I know about is Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's the only one I know about. I don't know any other black physicists. So you don't think there's, there's not other black physicists? I didn't say that. I said I don't know about I'm them. sure there's plenty of it's, black it's physicists. It's because people out there. don't want to go into that field. It's listen, not, listen. It, it's not, so you ask a thousand people that, or every single person you know, if you had the choice in job that you could do, yeah, and you're going to get paid a million a year or something. So it, all it comes down to is what job do you want? But you have to work. I, I will tell you, not one of them will say I want to be an astrophysicist. So it's not necessarily because I think they would. No, I don't, I they, don't. You think of everybody you know, there's one person that would say, if you could just... just I'm oh, you're thinking, I thought you were talking about those particular guys there. No, no okay. you. I think if each person on this table, and between us, we know a good couple of thousands of people. And if you were to ask every single person we know, you're going to get paid a million pound a year to do a job, a real job. Not, I want to sit sit on, this, on the beach and whatever. You, a real job. But pick it and you just get paid a million. And it's, you get to pick the job. Nobody's going to say, I want to be an astrophysicist. I think I, I know, know one of these guys. I want to be an astrophysicist. At least one person, bro. I know at least one person that would say yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's so what I'm know. saying to you. And but I'm saying this again. But I, my point well, is, this, it'll be a small number. It's re- and this is why. But I'm, it's because it, it's because it's rarefied air. That's why it is rarefied air. If you remember when you went to uni, there were certain subjects that had um, higher levels of, of ad- administration than other levels, simple um, other um, degrees, simply because a lot of the time, whether we like it or not, people went to university and did chose a course that they knew that they or they felt more confident that they could actually get a degree in very few people go and do a degree that's hard very few, very few people go and do a degree because it's hard people normally say I'm going to university I'm going to get a degree yes they may have a general interest in that area but outside of that they normally go for a degree that they know they can actually get no I don't agree with you on that okay. I think oh. most people go for a degree that they think they want to get a job in I don't think so what? What, I do, are you, what about? I, sp- I speak to a lot of people who have got degrees, and I ask them whether they're doing anything to do with what they were doing as a degree, and they're like, no. Yeah, but doesn't mean at the time when they actually went for the degree, they didn't think that that was going to be able to help them to get a job. I don't know. I don't know. About I'll that. tell you that right now. The, the degree I did is I did multimedia computing. Uh, it's not got nothing to do with the job that I'm doing now. But I went to do the degree one because I thought it would be a good degree. I didn't think I, I didn't necessarily know whether or not I was going to pass it or not. I just thought it might be interesting. I found the, the subject interesting, so I went to my to do a degree to do that. But then I also thought that if I want to get into IT, I'm going to need to have some form of IT degree, which is what I've got, or that, computing degree, I should say. Sorry. So, so you, so you weren't interested in the? I might say interested. I mean, you didn't see yourself having a career in that. What in multimedia computing? Yeah. No, I did. At, at first, I thought, yeah, I thought I was going to get into it. I'll start doing web design. Or start doing it to coding and blah, blah, blah. It's only after I did the degree, I was like, mm, this may be not for me. But I still wanted to do something within a, the IT field. Mm, mm, mm. So I used it as my IT degree. So I think people, bruv, going to the university for three years or whatever years you're going for, or four or three years, people are not just going there because, they, you know what, just going there to see if I can just do any degree. Most of the time, they're going there because they're doing something that they find interesting. Whether or not they then get a job from what I interest after is a completely different kettle of fish. But they actually go to university because they're interested in the subject that they're doing. And a lot of the time, most of them have, have gone, you have to do A-levels to get that degree that you're doing in the first place. So you have to do certain A-levels to get your the, the to get into the certain university courses that you want to do in the first place. Okay. Uh, it's Mr. Wolf. I think we've kind of veered away from the original question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, regarding uh, the uh, passion of sending negative videos and the positive ones. And the reason why I mentioned those three guys. On one hand, we're complaining about these uh, gruesome, gross, and uh, uh, the, the, these videos that make no sense. And then on the other hand, we're being very dismissive of something that is positive. You may not see it as positive. It may not do anything to you, but it may touch somebody else. So you got to think about, I think you got to think outside of the box, outside of Stavros and outside of Wahala. I think you got to think about someone who can see that 
and take motivation from it. Someone that can see that and, and just say to themselves, you know what, these guys are doing something special. All the time we see, and this is what I was talking about last week about, you know, the empowerment of the black man. Over and over again, we see videos of the stabbings. We see videos of this guy's gone prison. We see videos, uh, uh, articles and all kinds of things. And the one time that we see something positive, it gets dismissed. Oh, I, I oh, didn't oh, dismiss it. Yeah, well, you know, I don't see no big deal in it. It may not be a big deal to you, but it may be a big deal to somebody else. And I am going to make a conscious effort to send more positive videos and articles like that. And I, and I won't fight you for it. So I'm, I'm not saying that. For me, you never saw me say, why did you send me this? I didn't, no. have, a pro- I didn't have a problem with you sending it to me. I'm just saying for me personally, that is not something that makes me feel empowered, if that makes any sense. Maybe because I've got a degree or maybe because... It didn't really make me feel empowered either. Yeah, so I don't know. So I, I, I look for different things. I look for things... Like if you were to show me something where somebody's gone out of their way to help others, you that, know, you that know, might make me feel a bit more like, yes. That video of the, the two boys that were going to fight and people were recording it. Mm. And then one man just walked in and, yep. then, and stopped and the fight it. and told them, you, you, know, you should be ashamed for even recording it and you two, you know, shake hands and whatnot. And uh, so there, there was a second video after that where it's like I don't know if it was a school or the they the gave community. him an award. They gave him yeah, some yeah. sort of an award. And he, he was, was crying. He was crying as he was. And for me, I thought that that talked to me. Both of those videos, for for whatever reason, I guess it was a bit different then. Mm, the second video didn't touch me so much. The second video, I'm like, why are you crying for? But, First video, but you see, but you see what you see where I'm I going. Hope, I hope we're harder cries on his wedding. That's what. I'm no, saying. the reason why I'm like, why are you crying for? For one, I wouldn't even have gone to the award in the first place. Me personally, I wouldn't have gone. You're doing your Ryu thing. Just, just win and just leave. Yeah, because what, what did I do apart from I stopped two people from having a fight? Again, I I liked what he did. The thing I liked about what he did is not just because he stopped them from having a fight. It's because he actually told the rest. He showed them. Look at these people laughing at you, and I, that's what I liked. He showed everyone around you. He showed them up and said, "Look why they're just laughing at you." None of them are actually, you know, um, getting involved. They're not helping you. They're not trying to stop you. They're not trying to better you in any way, shape or form. These are all meant to be your friends. And all they're doing is laughing at you and egging you on to do foolishness. Web Slinger. I think we live in a world of um, reality TV. Everything is obtainable when it's there and now. So the violence is, is captured because everybody wants to be the first to capture the violence. We know that seeing it on Hollywood screen is not real anymore. We want to see it real, live and direct. And we have access to that because we have smartphones where we can just create it ourselves by going out and causing acts of violence and filming it and then just spreading it around. The thing with the the positivity of black males, we don't have enough of it. We've been dogged too many times. So the smallest piece of praise or positive things we get we should just make it a big deal because we don't get it enough so i kind of co-sign what um mr wolf is saying and it's not for everybody not everybody likes to see someone being praised and it it could be a small self-conscious thing or just a small little hating thing that we have within us but i think it's something that should be just pushed out as much if you see it push it whether you don't like it or not but you see it's a positive thing, just push it. Because mm. we need we need more positivity for our black males. And it helps inspire the younger and black generation as well. I think that we always talk about black males the positive um positive role models, but black females need just as many positive role models as, as the males do, man. And I think we forget them a lot of the time when we discuss these positive um aspects. Because on the TV they don't they don't have many positive role models either. Oh, you know what? I was going to, I was going to say something dismissive, or what sounds a bit dismissive, and say, I think that the road to positive females is is uh, shorter and more successful than it is for males. I don't feel I don't feel like black men um, get into that positive role model position as readily as females do. They got Mister Wolf, nothing. I do you agree. I mean, they, like I've said in the past, that they have they continuously have got a lot of struggles you know there's there's no denying that but if there's an employer and they see a black male and a black woman and they can both do the same job from what i've seen 
They're going for the woman. Oh, oh no. Oh, I wasn't. Whoa, whoa. Well, Simple, Stav- Stavros did not co-sign. Simple well, Hala also doesn't co-sign that. Simple Simon was not saying nothing like that. <laughs> what Simple Simon was saying was that I think women, black women in particular, are more on job. Hold on, is that is that Mr. Wolf over there? All, all by himself. Under the dog. <laughs> Under the dog. Under the dog. I, I can barely see him. I, I, I'm saying black women are more on job. So. We know already that statistically, like uh, between black men and black women, black women have more degrees than the black men. We know that already. They have more degrees than anyone, apparently. Okay, so that's fantastic. any demographic or something. They're, they're so, more. so we can see that they're more on job. So, I guess they don't have uh, many poster girls or, if they, or poster women for um, the black woman's success in that in that academic area. And I think that may be what's missing. But they're quietly just JJ doing their thing and getting get, getting getting into positions. And I think black males are being left behind. So what did they say? When you, do you work on your strengths or do you work on your weaknesses? And at the moment, as far as the black community is concerned, the man them are the weakness. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's a... I think you... Like we had Yvette on her the other day. Remember when she was struggling to find a positive female robot? Yeah, yeah. That's the same thing that we were saying about the men, you know? So you have to think about it like this. You've decided as because you're looking out from the outside in on your perspective yeah. that you probably see what you'd think is more positive female role models for these women than there is males more models for boys. I'm assuming, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I'm, yeah, I'm thinking more of that level. Yeah, that, but that I, parent uncle kind of. I'm not sure if the females are feeling that way. So I say women because they don't like the term female anymore. I'm not sure if the women feel that same way. I think that they probably are still looking at their role models and not necessarily thinking. Hmm, these are the best role models for me. Or, or the problem with, I say a lot of the time with uh, uh, women role models or female role models, I'm just going to say even because that makes sense with this t- terminology that I'm using, is that um, they get judged so harshly that even though we as men know that they haven't really done anything that bad, society judges the women so harshly that they could have an impeccable, an impeccable record in something. They could be fantastic in this, fantastic in that. But like, let's, say, let's use Mary J. Blige, for example. Mary J. Blige is a fantastic singer. She's one of the best singers probably ever, yeah? Okay. Yeah, for R&B singers, Mary J. Blige is up there. Okay. She's a legend. There is oh. no way about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. A legend. Yeah. Full world. Albums, classics. Classic after classic after classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? But she's always going to be tarnished as the woman that needs to be damaged before she can do a good album. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I, I, I don't know too, too much about her, but if it's the truth, then what's wrong with the... But I'm saying that as a role model, we was, you could see, yeah, she's a role model, but you have to, she has to be damaged before she can be a good role model. And she's still not a good role model because she's that damaged woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think, I think... Sing, singing is being a role model. It's certain people, yes. I think, I think if Amy Winehouse was still alive, she'd need to be on drugs to be making good music. Mm. I think so. I don't, I don't I think. Know. I think some, I think... Would they call her a role model? Um, again, if you want to look at all of the greats, you've got James Brown, you've got Jimi Hendrix, you've got all of these people who were on drugs. Ray Charles, all of them. Okay, are you so, classifying them as role models? If, if, if you say that's look at, you just said now that people might look at musicians and see them as role models, then those people would be seen as more role models. No, they, I'm were, say, I'm they were at the height of their craft. I'm saying that somebody like Mary J. Blige, even though she's very good at one thing, the thing that people still focus on is the fact that she's damaged as a person. I it, think a lot of people look at Mary J. Blige as a role model. Um, Mary J. Blige inspires a lot of women. Yeah, and 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 the fact that I mean, you got to remember that that where soul music has come from. Do you understand? It's come from hardship, and through that hardship, you know, you can feel the emotion that comes through the music and through the vocals. So the mere fact that she's gone through, or that she maybe continues to go through certain things, and then her best music comes from that, I don't see that as a big problem would person. you say that the girl, young girls will grow up and say I want to be like Mary J Blige I would think that they grow up I'm, I'm maybe, confused as to what difference what, so what? Yeah, they, because they, I'm, this is what we're talking about positive role models in, yeah but you just picked one person yeah but I'm just thinking, yeah I'm saying in general I don't think uh, sorry sorry no. Mr Wolf but my point originally is that I think that when it comes to women the way that they are judged harshly for, for little things so even a woman is a, let's say the woman is I feel like, that, oh, maybe that's just a bad example go, yeah maybe even if let me just say something like a woman could be even let's say you're normal everyday um, woman this is an everyday woman yeah yep. she could be a good woman she's a good mother she's a good this she's a good dad does she have a bottom <laughs> yes bottom and all that stuff whatever yeah <laughs> but um, I don't know she's got she, she's she gone out with a waste man and had a child for a waste man all right. that is what she will be judged on the most she went out with that waste man and I had a waste man baby father 
I don't, I can't, I don't look up to that woman because she's, she, she went out with waste. I don't necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, Mr. Wolf always kind of, I think through every hardship, something positive comes from it. So I think that some, some women associate themselves with Mary J. Blige. So they think, okay, um, she's going through what I've been through and I'm listening to her message and the way that she's come through that hardship. I associate myself with her and she inspires me. So if there's a woman, for example, who has been with a waste man and, you know, and has had a child from a waste man, is she doing anything positive after she's maybe gone through that difficult period? So unless she becomes waste herself, which I don't think Mary J. Blige is, I think that there's a good reason for people to be inspired and for them to look up and to look at them as role models. Well, even even the regular woman who's gone through the issue of being with a waste man. I, yeah, I disagree. I don't think a woman that's been with a waste man and has had a child with him and then, pers- you know, perseveres, does well, still educated, still working well, still looking after their child. People don't look at her as, well, you're the woman that went out with a waste man. They look at her, you're, you're the woman that has a waste man on the side, but you're still doing well. I know that, I don't think anybody on this table looks at the woman that says, that's says that. Table. I, don't, I don't think in general even people say that. I don't know, yeah, I don't know if people get summed by summed up like that in, in the way that you're if saying you always run out of waste men then that's then, different then I would say you, you, have, you, a, were, you have a poor choice in, you're in waste the, yourself not necessarily if, even that no, no but you will waste there them. are some good women that I'm sure we all know that can't yeah, find or they, yeah they make they're not really good at picking men that doesn't mean that they're not good women that's mm. one of your flaws unfortunately you know it has a, a big effect on your life in that respect but that's it. I don't. I don't. I, they're still decent women. Okay. I, I want to touch on King and the Wasteman right. a bit later, by the way. But um, you want to touch on who? A King and the Wasteman a, a bit a bit later. But I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. I would like to see if anybody out there can actually give, uh, especially women, can give if they feel like they've got more positive female role models than male have than black black males have um, male role models. Because I, I I don't think that they'll feel that way. In that respect, Stavros is not going to argue with you. I don't know enough about it. Because I don't necessarily look up to female or, or male. I don't split it like that. But so that could be the case. I just don't think you've argued it very well. But possibly, let's, possibly. Let's slightly move on. You have to remember the first black... Before we move on, let me ask a quick question. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do we think, and I'll ask everybody who can answer this individually, what we're doing as, as ESN is a positive thing? All right. And do we regard ourselves as positive role models? I like that question. That's a, that's a fantastic question. That's the best question all evening. Mm. And I'm going to pass it on to somebody else. <laughs> so who, who wants to go first? <laughs> Simple. I don't know if we're, we're role models for anybody else. This podcast for me is penance. Um, it's what, sorry? It's penance. You don't ask I'm, for penance, bruv. I'm, I'm, I'm purging myself of, of, of sins of past. <laughs> I'm getting it out. If that is that If that is somehow uh, inspirational to somebody else, that's absolutely fantastic. But that's not the reason and purpose why I'm out here doing this. The politician, Simple Simon, has spoken. I don't think that people purposely go out there to be role models. I think that they, they just do what they're doing and then they become a role model. So somebody may, or people may be listening to this and think that, you know what, these guys are good guys, man. You know, I like what they're doing. and Even Web Swinger. And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> ESN has inspired a lot of people to do different things, to do podcasts, to do uh, Facebook pages and to do uh, events and all kind kinds of things, you understand. So, um, do I think I'm a role model myself? I aspire to be a role model for my son and my daughter. That's what I try to do. I agree with um, Mr. Wolf with regards to ESN in certain aspects, inspiring people to do other and. <coughs> <coughs> Are you getting all choked up over there? <laughs> are you crying? Why are you crying, bro? Why I, you ate crying? I ate popcorn and I was in my throat. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, now I think you have it. I think you, I think you have it. <laughs> you bastards! I think you have inspired others to do other things. Definitely, I think people have seen what we've done. I probably think they could better it. In this, is gonna be real, but they've seen us as an inspiration to do other things. So that in that respect, I think yes. Do I think that people um, look at us as role models? Potentially, potentially, I would say that I I think that people look at me in role models in certain aspects of certain things. 
So I'll say, God damn. Yeah, I've done well for myself mm. as far as I'm concerned. I've done mm. really well, yeah. and I, I, and I'm and I don't pretend like I haven't. I worked hard for the stuff I do. I get promoted very, quite often in my jobs I'm in. I do good shit. That's so it. I expect people to say yes. I do good shit. That's Same that. thing like what I always say that when people say to me, what you know, what percent? How did you live your life? If somebody ever asks me, how do you live your life? I always say I live my life like my sister did, and people can look at me running like, what do you mean? I always say that. I always check my sister is we've said this in the podcast before if my sister wants to do something she does it and she does it well simple and plain she doesn't she says she wants to run a marathon she'll run it and she'll get a good time can, can I just stop and make this one story this is my sister now my sister decided um, she wanted to do the I don't know if it's run for life or whatever it is yeah, for, for cancer I, I can't remember what it was but she had never done running in her life now she was in her 30s and decided I'm gonna run a, a, a mini marathon or whatever it was. So she did her few weeks of training. Uh, when I say a few, I don't mean it was like a week or two. You know, she done her, a few months of training, and then she did the race. And I think they split it: professional and um, amateur. And she came eighth in the amateur. Oh wow! And th- that is what my brother's talking about. When my sister does something, she don't muck. About she excels in everything, and it, uh, being her younger brother is is quite disheartening. It is. <laughs> well, not for me. I'm, 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 so, so she's a role good. model then. Yeah, she's my role model. Blatantly, blatantly my role model. Because I always I, we spoke about previously about we've had an older brother and he didn't he passed away right, and the way he passed away is he killed himself. So he made a lot of mistakes. I would say in his life, and my sister didn't. So. I looked at the two older role models because Stav is, as he said, we and him are quite close in age. So he wasn't that, he wasn't close enough for me to, to see his path, basically. And I decided, which path should I take? And I just looked at my sister and she was just always hitting the right places. She was always doing the right things. So I just decided I'm going to be like my sister. So I, every time I saw my sister do something, I would assess it. Well, like if I got into a situation, I would assess it how my sister would do it. How would she think? Like, um, people always wonder me why I always ask my sister stuff. And it's always her I call. If there's something I need to discuss or something I need to ask, I will call her because that is my, who, who I call my role model. My, my parents are also my role models. And I see and I look at them from afar and what they've done in their life. And I, you know, look at the stuff that they do in relationships and stuff like that. That's how I see them. But when I'm talking about my day to day, my work, my, how, I, how I move and stuff like that. It's my sister that I, I, I deal with. If I know that I've done something wrong or I need to be told that I've done something wrong, it's usually her that was the one that will be able to get through to me. In fact, probably everyone in the house actually is that will be the one to tell you, you know you've done something wrong. I'll still tell her, if I, if I still don't think I've done something wrong, I'll still tell her I haven't. But it's most likely going to be her that's going to get through to me. So... Well, how are you going to run a marathon? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 You never know, actually. Maybe maybe when I get slim thing in it, I might do it. Web Slinger, are we... Um, do you think that the ESM podcast is a inspiration or role models? I think we are very inspirational as a podcast. We've been doing this for a long time, even though we just started season two. When we did season one, we created a movement and that movement was very inspirational from from Slagfest to ESN and beyond. We've been and continue to be inspirational. It may be in small pockets, but we've touched people's hearts and we've push them into doing things that they yep. wouldn't ordinarily do I completely mm-hmm. co-sign with them 100% there's people that still to this day call me and be like you know that that period of my life was the best part of my life that that, that Facebook page was deep man I'm not even talking about that I'm talking about, about when, we used to, when we used to go out oh, and we um, just used to bring, yeah we used to Slackfest. bring people out people they, you know what in certain times let's take it to a, a deep session here yeah there's times when we don't know what people are going through in their life you don't know when somebody's on the press. I just talk about my brother committing suicide. I didn't know. We None of us knew in the house that he was at that level. You never know where somebody is mm-hmm. in their brain. You never know when they're depressed. You never know when they're at that mental, mental state where they're yeah. down. You never know what that one time when staff calls you and says, let's go to the cinema. Or simple says, it's time to go eat dinner. And you're bringing all these different new, new people, new people that we have never even known into our life. And bringing them out and then treating them just like family. Because that's what we did. We treated the people that we didn't know like family. And that made a big difference to a lot of people. Well, let me not say a lot. A small number of people within a, in a circle. But it made a difference to some of them. Yeah, and all we ask you to do is promote the podcast. And you can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> but for, and, and the thing about it, for the people like us, we just thought it was Tuesday. Do you understand? Yeah, for real. But for other people, that was a big thing in their life. 
And I'm never going to apologise for being that person. I, 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 I think that is something that definitely Web Slinger is right about. All right. So this is Stavros then. Let me, let me touch on this question about if we're role models and whatnot. And then I think it's time to explain what Slagfest is for the people that don't yeah, know. I was going to say. Yeah, so. because uh, we ain't got many topics anyways. I did have some, but I'm dashing that now. So are we role models? I don't know. Um, like somebody else said, I think it was Mr. Wolf, I want to be a role model to the youngins in the family. All right? So that's what's important to me. I feel that um, deal with the people that are immediately in your circle, the people that you know. And I don't think that I am your know, typical successful man. I don't know, because, you know, I've got, I've got a house or a flat. I'm married. I have a child. I'm, tr- I'm trying to be the best father I can be. So maybe people might see that, well, you've, you've, you know, I've got a job a decent paying job and people might say you know you've got the dream and you're, you're set at least you're on the right path and maybe that's an inspiration to somebody or maybe they, somebody sees me as a role model I don't know but I care about my nephews my nieces my daughter you know my cousins my younger cousins that's what I care about I want them to, to look up and say I like what you're doing uncle or dad or wherever it is it's, you know you guys children's as well that's, that's what, and, and vice versa I want them to be to, to look at my friends and that they count as uncles because we're family and say this person is doing right this person is doing well so on that point i just want to talk about my nephew who i talk about often if there's a drinking game going on then take a drink because i'm proud of him uh i'm proud of all of them but the oldest one who had uh issues when he was growing up so this is the son of the brother we just spoke about stop and crying no Are you all in a minute though? not yet <laughs> <laughs> now and i'm saying that i'm very proud of him he messaged me um couple of nights ago and asked our uncle what what um podcast app should i listen to the podcast on i'm like why he said well i heard one of the on one of the old episodes that you know you said uh rate and review us so i just want to make sure that when i'm listening to the podcast it makes a difference to your listenership and i said this boy i said thank you you know don't worry about it you just keep listening and that's all that matters but i appreciate the fact that even went out of your way to do something like that and i wrote and i said i'm proud of you because he is a good father now himself to two young daughters. He's a good partner to his to his missus. And he works hard. I just went to see him at work yesterday. And I said, I, I just want him to know that I'm proud of him as well. And I think by doing that, the circle of motion will show that, you know, if uncle is proud of me, then I'm doing right. And I want to continue to do right as well. So I think it's, it's a circular thing that we need to make sure that we tell the people under, underneath us, rather than looking at, are we, are, are we role models? Forget that. Are the people underneath us doing well? And are we telling them they're doing well when they're doing well? So this goes back to what that thing about, don't worry about people on, on the social media and, and this video you sent me. It's, it's, I, don't, I don't mean it in a bad way, but I, what I said last week is that we need to focus on people that we know. So remember what I said? You congratulate the people you know. Don't worry about these people out there. Oh, we need to talk about the big community. Forget them. <clears throat> talk about the people that you know in your life and say, bruv, cousin, nephew, Sister, niece, you're doing well. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Mm. Yeah, I'll call sign that. I, sorry, uh, I do, but I also think that, um, you know, when we spoke about uh, it takes um, a village, yeah, to raise a child. That's what I'm saying. So I agree. I, with you. I do yeah, think this that is the village still, I'm talking about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you I'm, need to expand yeah, your village sometimes. Which is what? I think you need to take, make a conscious effort sometimes to. to speak out and I'm saying that I have seen what one word can uh, uh, mean to, to a stranger I've had people come back to me and say you know what you said to me it made a difference and this is people that I don't know so I do understand but if fully they're in your what circle, you're saying now I'm talking about people that are not in my circle that I don't know and I've never met so how did that, they hear you sorry they heard you on the podcast no 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 I'm saying that I've interacted that's I've what that's what I mean. This them. is what yeah, I mean. This is, said, this is what I'm talking about. That said, is your village. Yeah, but he's saying that not not, he's a media circle. Mm. But this, who's saying that? That's what Mr. Wolf is Me. saying. That's what I'm saying. People that I don't that know. That he doesn't really know. He's just spoken to them once or twice and they've left an impact on them. Yeah. But we, so that's what he's talking about. But you're talking more about your people, your people. No, that you I, know. I believe in the village mentality. Remember, I'm, I was the one pushing it, or not was, I am the one pushing it more than anybody. No, you I believe in that forget village. About it. No, this is people across the, another country. They, you're never going to speak to these people. They don't know you, you don't know them. I'm not but, talking about but them. But we live in a world where you can know that person. 
Social media just makes the world a lot smaller. And this this is my issue with, I think, with definitely with us men in this room and Web Slinger in South Africa. Or maybe not Web Slinger, actually. Web Slinger is probably the best at doing this. We talk a good game about how we're good men and we promote positivity and stuff like that. But I think that we could do a whole lot more. I think all of us here could be mentors in a strange way to mm-hmm. others. I don't think we just have to deal with our immediate circle or just our children. I have no children. I've got nieces and nephews, but I have no children. It's not like I don't have time to go out and become a mentor for some of these kids out there that potentially do need somebody, especially a male, as we were saying that there's not any male role models, to be a male role model. I could potentially go and sit around and, and, and just sit around with a boy after school and help him to do his maths homework, something like that. Or if he wants to get into IT, um, try my best to you know show him the way that I got into it and see if I can find him a way of getting a job. Now, I do, I do things in my workplace that potentially I shouldn't be doing at work. I should be doing it outside work. So if I, I, I'll blatantly honestly say, if I find a black person at my workplace, especially a young boy, I've got my way to try and help that person as much as I can because I know the struggles that sometimes black boys have at work. That's a big deal. I think. It's I'm, a big deal, but I could do that. I don't have to wait for the person to come and get the job at my workplace to do that. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to, there's so many different um, outreach programs or, you know, places where I could potentially give my time and, and put more of an effort in to help these young boys. Yeah, big up Mr. International. Um, he came over from America recently and um, whilst we was at dinner, he's our cousin, uh, Wahala and Stavros' cousin. And whilst we were talking, he just brought up the fact that he had a mentor that he, that he mentors with and I think he was talking about it was he, he, Christmas or whatever he buys him clothes sometimes and he's like uh, thought even crossed my mind as well and he's like yeah because uh, Mr. International same 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 name as me same age as me and he's a mentor he's like well I just you know I meant, I, he went out of his way when he went to another country went from Nigeria to America and he found a scheme to because he thought I'm in a position now just like what I was saying where I, I can mentor people and that's what he went out of his way to do. You, you don't know if you're that person that can stop that boy from stabbing that boy in the chest. You could be that person. You could be that person that tells somebody, because they come from homes that maybe the situations in their houses, what they see is right and wrong, does not, does not match well, the world. Don't want to dismiss Mr. Wolf's um, coaching, because I think that is part of this thing. Yeah, the football well. coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I agree with football coaching, but again, I, I, get, I get that, but after the football coaching, I think that's more of a sport thing. Which, and I think sometimes, as blacks, we focus a lot too much on sport. No, I would go as far as to say it's discipline. And when when discipline is involved, yes, it's about a sport, but there is discipline in there. And it's not just about football. It's about um, conduct. It's about how you interact with people. It's about how you deal with... Connection. Abba's connection. Someone to talk to. Yeah, Abba's in a so. team. So it's not just like, yeah, it's, well, it's sport. Even us on a weekend when we play football, there's quite young boys that come to play football. Oh, and, yeah. And as we're quite older than the rest of them. And we'll, at the time when it's half time or whatever, we will chat to them. And we'll be like, what are you doing at school? What are you doing at college? You need to do this. You need to do that. So I'm doing that with people that uh, I've got fathers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, why, not, why am I not doing that with people that don't have fathers? But um, I think that what you said is a big deal, Wahala. And what you touched on, Simple Simon, is true. And I never thought about it until maybe about six months ago when my barber, funny enough, that shaves my bald head, said, don't (laughs) underestimate the impact that you've had on these boys the time that you've been with them. And I've been with them for about six years now. And it wasn't until he said that he said, they will never forget your name. I thought, you know what? I think you got a point there because everything that Simple Simon touched on there is exactly what it is. Sometimes, you know, when you see, it, it could be like a kid is off form and he's not playing as well. I don't look at that, look at that and think, oh my God, he's rubbish. He's not doing well. I'm thinking, what's going on at school? What's going on at home? And there's been a couple of times when I've called the parent and I've said, you know, is everything all right? And then the mum's just burst out in tears. So there's certain things that have happened and then when you give advice to the kid, give advice to the mum, some of them are single mothers, you can see that you've had an impact in that child. Do, do you ever remember the, did any of you watch the programme with Ian Wright? When it was gone in his life? Ooh, yeah, I've yeah. seen that and, yet, you know. Uh, yeah, you've seen it? I okay, well, seen I'm, I'm going to spoil one. a bit of it for you. I don't mind. I don't and there was, you probably might have seen this you, because you it went around with social media. Oh, yeah, where yeah, 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 yeah. He was basically in, I think it was in one of the stadiums, either Arsenal Stadium yeah, 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 or West Ham yeah, yeah. or something. I've seen that bit. And then some guy just went to him, you're right, Ian? And he looked around and it was one of his old teachers. Yeah. And he just burst out crying. 
he just burst no, no. out the man crying. stood because he was sitting down he stood up took off his hat and said let's say Mr. Mr. Stevens yeah. and started crying now throughout the program I think he had spoke about he had had a rough time growing up he's, I think his dad had left him he was a bit of a ragamuffin you know he caused some trouble growing up and in school and there was one teacher I think it was a PE teacher or whatnot, and he said that he's, he, he was like my dad he cared about me he spoke to me he, he's, he's the one that helped me along the way in terms of being the professional footballer that I was or that I used to be and he said I tried to get in contact with him and he told me that he had died so the producers of the show found him out and because it was an empty stadium and then just let him walk in and surprise him right and what he said is you don't know what you did for my life exactly what you just said you don't know and um, so coach let's not dismiss coaching as, I'm, I'm as, not as I'm, as I'm thinking yeah. about I'm, I'm, I've gone about myself and I, I agree because we all know teachers um, I don't know we may have teachers that you can look back and say you know what that was a good teacher you know because everybody can get a, anybody can get a qualification to be a teacher but sometimes it's inbred in you to do to go the extra mile that what you do at work mm. is inbred in you you don't need to do that you know my brother-in-law does does, does this kind of thing you know what this, this podcast is done for Stavros yeah, usually we talk, we bust our joke, you know, we leave and whatnot. But this has made me think. I think um, what Wahala just said about being a being a mentor, I need to take this on board and try better myself. I think that in my own life, with the people I know that I'm close to, I believe that I've done a decent job. But maybe I do need to reach out and try and find somebody else because, like we've just said, we we are in kind of positions where we can do this. You got to think of it like this. You got a daughter. Um, uh, three of you here have got daughters. Me and Webs haven't got children, but the three of you here have got daughters, yeah. And these daughters are gonna have to meet men at some point that you or you would hope they're gonna meet men and get married or whatever if that's what you want them to do. We're saying that all these men are waste. Who's gonna mold these men? There you go. Even that's if good. it's a selfish reason as to why you're doing this, we should all be doing it. And Webs. You're quiet, but you've done this, man. Mm. He was doing this for a long period of time. Yeah, speak on it, Webs. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I know me. I, I do my thing, and I just do my thing, and I. Yeah, that's we I'm, know you, but the public don't know you, bruv. Tell the public, bruv. Big up yourself <laughs> and your four hairy chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to work with an organisation that went into schools and referral units and. You know, talk kids about the dangers of drugs, talk them about civil law, gangology, and just try to put them on a straight and narrow and a better path. And I've had kids come up to me, or they're not even kids anymore, they're like bigger than me, and say, Ah, oh, sir, Webbs, I remember you from when you came into the school and talked to us. You know, you talked to me about smoking, and I haven't smoked since, and I really appreciate that. And now I'm doing this, that, and the other. And I'm like, Cool, I appreciate it. I, I, I don't take it on board. I just go and do what I do and then hopefully it, whatever wisdom that I have that I imparted sinks in and does something. I don't wait for the applause or anything like that. I just... Does it give you a sense of pride though? Uh, Does it give you a sense of pride that you've done this? Is it something that you would look back on? You're quite old. So maybe in the next two years when you're on your deathbed, you say to yourself, <laughs> um, <laughs> you say to yourself, you know what? I did that and I'm proud of that. Yes and no. I mean, I, I, I don't do it for the sake of pride or accolade or anything like that. I just do it because I know someone's in trouble and they need help. Mm, that's big. Simple as that. It's, that's it. I mean, I hope if, if I have a child and for God forbid that something happens and I can't be the role model for my child but someone else can be mm, in that big. respect that's big that's big you know it's like you, all of you guys that have kids if god forbid something goes wrong one of us can pick up the slack for you it's 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 an innate thing it's something that's just natural Even it should be done standardly it's not anything we do for praise or accolade or anything like that we do it because it's the right thing to do. Yes. 
All right. I think um, we should just leave it on that note. Yes. That was a nice, positive, uplifting note to leave it on. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, goodbye on our church notes and get out this piece. Uh, Simple Simon. Simple Simon. Uh, Simple Simon FB on Twitter. That is at Simple Simon FB on Twitter. Sorry, caught me off guard there. Um, I'm there. I like to, you know, cause trouble sometimes. Like to put my thoughts out there, see what happens. Get in contact. Web Slinger. What's going on, people? It's your boy Webs. Uh, DJ Web Slinger's on Twitter. The other guy, that's his nemesis and his best friend, is the actor. He's on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Holler at me. And, and that actor is spelled D A T, actor, by the way. D A T. For anybody, for anybody that's looking for normal human spelling, I can't find it. Delta, <laughs> Alpha. And the tango. only reason it is spelt like that is because the kids I used to mentor and teach, they would say, Ah, oh, sir, you're that actor. I see you on TV. I see you in a advert, blah, blah, blah. Um... They would never. I had to teach them that, but I liked that, so I kept that. Thinking. So, yeah. We found out the truth at the same time as, as you listeners. All right. Um, Wahala. Yo. Big Wahala on Twitter. Big Wahala on Insta. Um, let's go on about the discussion that we just had. If anybody wants to get in contact with me about potentially doing something which may be in some form of mentoring or something like that, maybe you've heard us and you think, you know what, that guy Wahala is that guy. He might be able to help somebody else out. Holler at me. Let me know. All right. Was it just me, think, or, or did the base? I think it was for sponsorship for Wahala to do the marathon. <laughs> if I can walk the marathon, I'll do it, fam. As long as I can walk around, <laughs> and I can get you know instead of water, water stops. I want meat stops. <laughs> I want meat every every quarter mile. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. Mr. Wolf. Uh, yeah, Mr. Wolf. You can catch me on Instagram. Uh, Yummy's yeah, Insta. And on Twitter, it's Yemi Online. On Facebook, via uh, ESN. And I, um, I think I'm with uh, Wahala on that. So if there's any listeners out there that uh, hear me and think my thoughts are uh, anything close to decent ones, um, and you maybe want me to reach out to some youngster, then by all means, man. And I know quite a few mentors, you know. There's quite a few good guys out there that are doing this thing. So large up yourselves, man. All right. Um, before, well, I'm Stavros Boss. You can catch me at Stavros Boss everywhere. Before I give out the social media for uh, eloquently saying nothing as a collective, let's just big up one of our old things that we used to do. And, well, it's still there. It's on it's on uh, Facebook. And you can find uh, this group, which is a uh, promotional group, where if you have anything, it, it's, it's quite ethnically, um, you know, directed, I guess. But if you have anything you wanted to promote, you can go on Facebook and search for Eloquently Network Something. That's Eloquently Network Something. And you can post anything you might want to promote there in club events, um, shops that you may have, hair and beauty, whatnot. Well, something was posted there recently by my wife. And it was about 100 Black Men of London annual Father's Day event. Yeah. And uh, so, I seeing as we've that. been talking on this, let me just promote it. I don't know these people, but they seem to be doing something good. So why not promote it? So it says, for the last 16 years, the 100 have held a special day out for men and children only. Sorry, ladies, but this one is just for the men. This year, we are returning to the venue of our very first quality time event. And that's Chesney and World of Adventures. Uh, so they have coaches that leave Elephant Castle. Uh, this is Saturday, June the 17th. They leave there in the morning and it costs £20 to go down there. And uh, I think that's it. So it includes transport and inclusion into the park so the children do not have to be your own just remember to turn them <laughs> return them at the end of the day so you can go to facebook and search for eloquently network something and find that it's not too far down but it's called chester in world of adventures black fathers and kids day and uh, if you actually look on the event what you see is that um there are men bidding that saying I, I can't go myself or I don't have any children but I'm going to pay for any men that can't afford to take their own children or another child out and uh, there, big, there, there's people actually just so I put me down and I'm paying for five or put me down I'm paying for six 
And so go find these six men that are willing to find these children. And that's big. Yeah, so that's that's a thing there. All right. So you can find us collectively at ESN Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And you can search for us on Facebook at Eloquently Say Nothing or ESN Podcast. And you'll find us on Facebook as well. So on that note, thank you very much. We are out. And from South Africa, if you ain't saying nothing, say it well. Slag for life. Fucking prawns. Yes. I'm just gonna have to save them ESM stories for another day. Oh yeah, because we're gonna talk about the first. I don't think we could talk positively and then talk about the first. Yeah, exactly. I thought you know. <laughs> Alright, bye. Black bastard. Peace, bro. Right. So what ESN events have you do- are you are you hearing about? What? what ESN events have uh, Do you know how many people any of them be killed? Any of them that what even some of the man then what? You look man, we need to go out again. You don't know how I miss what we did, blah blah blah. I hear it all the time. All the time. And what's